Yo, what up? This is Hot Sick with Funk Volume, giving a shout out to Hard Knock TV. I should have stopped you when I had the chance to do so But back then I felt like that was too bold You started hanging with new folks And made the drug environment your new home This world is too cold Could I have prevented this? Who knows? Let's talk uh, Illmind, Hops, and Six mm -hmm. Can you uh, walk us through what the inspiration was for that? Yeah, well I had a friend that I grew up with And he he was like the one of the closest friends I ever had in my life And he got into crystal meth And he started hanging around the wrong people And eventually he went down the wrong road So he just like kind of started going crazy and then he overdosed a few times and things just got really foul and it, it hurt me too because you know when you have a best friend that you hang around with all the time and then they're not there no more it sets you back to zero in a, in a way where you're like man I, I don't I just lost my homie and now I gotta go find a new best friend or I'm just gonna not find a best friend at all and it, it's just it puts you in a weird position but I felt I felt so bad that all that happened to him because you know I used to rap with him too. He used to be in this room rapping with me, and we used to freestyle and all that. And he he was a he was a funny dude, very outgoing, kind of had a personality like Jim Carrey. And then once he started getting on drugs, it just went down to where he ju he just didn't he wasn't smiling at all. He was always serious, and he just didn't feel like a real person. And I just wanted to talk about that. On I, I made a song about it a while. A, a long time ago called Crystal Meth. It was on my, my first album called Gazing at the Moonlight. And, you know, it talked about some of the things that he did when he was on meth and all that. But then I um, just wanted to bring back a new version just because I, I run into a lot of people on tour who are who remind me of my friend Jesse. And mm -hmm. they're, I could see that they're going through the same stuff. So I just wanted to kind of show them like how what, what road that puts them on in the in the long run and I, I talked about how um, like he used to rap with me and all that and I want people to I want people who do that to really be like man that's me wait oh shit that means I might be on that same damn road that that Hobson's friend was on whatever I, I want them to actually question and be like do you really want that if you want it cool go ahead but I just wanted to you know let make people think twice about doing stuff like that because and it, it sucks to even for the people who are around other people like that to, who witness them do it and witness them go through it because it, it hurts. It really does hurt to lose somebody. And um, yeah, I just felt, felt like it needed to be discussed. And some people, some people thought, it, it actually, it really wasn't an ill mind. It was just the song on the album, Knock Madness. And I just wanted to put something out. So I, and I knew the time was coming where I needed to think of something to put out for the ill mind. So I was like, fuck, I don't really know what to do, I'll just use this song because it, ha it has some meaning to it and might as well put a good message out there with the ill mind power behind it. So yeah, I, it was just in memory of my homie. He's not dead or anything, okay. but he's just not the same no more. H has he seen the video or have you talked to him? I, I haven't talked to him. I, I don't know. I know a few of his family members have seen it, but I don't know if he's actually seen it. I ain't never felt this shit before, it gets me sore I reminisce on us playing Nintendo 64 And that Christmas in 97, we got new crispy boards And we was doing ollies in my kitchen on the slippery floor Shit changed and it happened quick But I can't forget that you was the first homie I started rapping with You could have had half of this back when I had established it But now I have to sit and feel bad, look at what your actions did well, I've seen some of the comments on YouTube, they're like Hobson's preachy, Hobson's this, Hobson's that from, Especially from the ill mind series, yeah, not yeah. so much with other stuff I, what would you say to, to, to somebody who, who says that? I would say I'm everything. I am preachy, I'm goofy, I'm loony, I'm emo, I'm a hardcore rapper, I'm a softcore rapper, I'm everything. I'm a fucking human. I have many emotions. Sometimes you might hear someone that's sad, sometimes you might hear someone that's super angry, sometimes you might hear someone me clowning. I, whatever, whatever my emotions are feeling, that's what I do. And when I did like the ill mind, before, I was in a clown mood. I felt like just clowning, just being ill and loony. Ill Mind 5, I felt like being serious. I couldn't take what the fuck I was seeing around society. Um, the Ill Mind 6, that's a song I just wanted to talk about my friend, and I, I miss him and how he used to be, and I want people to know what the fuck they're doing when they get into something like that. So I'm, 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 I'm a human. I'm, being a human in itself, I know I keep saying human stuff is so true. You're programmed with every emotion. So I'm everything. I have all the settings when you look under what is Marcus Hobson made out of. You see everything. You see serious, you see sad, you see angry, you see all types of emotions. And whatever one, that, well, life's ha whatever one life happens to strike during the time, that's what you're going to see. 
So I feel like from from where I sit, it's definitely refreshing because I, I interview a lot of artists who seem to be stuck in whatever that one emotion that they're trying to sell is. I'm yeah, a hardcore yeah. rapper. I'm a such a rapper. And it's like when you actually talk to someone, it's like, wait, you're a human being. Why is everything yeah, yeah. programmed in a certain way? Yeah, yeah. Like I'm 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 everything. I, I have a song on my album called um, Dream Forever. It's about a girl and, and it's slightly based off a true story of my own personal life about just the ideal girl that I dream about in my mind that I want and that I would love to marry one day and be with but um, it, this, the song has a, a, it's a it's a story to it so I'll just let people hear it but it's a it's a whole new type of feel of Hobson it's a whole new type of feel and but it's a real feeling of how I really feel and I just wanted to capture that on the song because that's what I am and some people there will be some people here and be like what the fuck Oh hell, and I ain't listening to this fucking shit. But hey, it's okay because that's a side of me, and you may not like it, but somebody over here might like it. So it's okay, and I don't give a fuck if anybody likes it really, because I fucking love it. So my yeah, like I said, my album has so many emotions. It's not just me being lyrical, bashing, rapping, pat, 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 and it's not just me being. You gotta use your mind, man. Understand what the fuck are you doing with your life? It's not just that. It's everything. Your bullshit, come off of that. Someone tell these motherfuckers that hop is back. I got my do rag on with my fitted sitting on it. Now I'm ready to fuck the game up, nigga. They can get it. They can get it. You can get it. You can get it. Y'all can get it. It really doesn't matter. Nigga. Yeah, the dark nights in his bitch without the mask. Again. Last time we were actually down here in this basement, uh, you were playing a, a beat that you made, and you were talking about how you wanted to produce the whole album. Is that is that? Yeah, I produced the whole album, mixed it all. Yeah. So I, I've worked on my, my mixing game and all that and pr production skills. You know, there, there's still, I don't think you can fully ever be done with knowing how to fully mix because there's so many different ways you can do mixing and different ways to make things sound. But it, it's definitely better than my last album for sure as far as like the mixing goes and all that, like the quality sounds a lot better. Uh, I remember when we talked, you said you thought maybe getting Yellow Wolf on it. Did you get any, like... Um, I got Tech 9 on it. That yeah. was That was the... Only one. I wanted to um, reach out to Yellow Wolf as well, but I don't think he had time. And um, I also wanted to get Macklemore on it, but he was. I he we had talked. I hit up Macklemore like early, early, like in January or something. And I I asked him if he was down. And he I mean he, he's been cool with me. Like I know him, so he's always been down to collab. But I just never had anything ready. And then I I think I hit him up almost shot him a text message like a month ago. But I think that was the same day he was doing like the the, I don't know if it was BT Awards or something, one of the award shows, I was like, oh, he's definitely not going to respond because all that shit was going on and I was like, there's no way. So I was just like, it's cool. You know, I'll, I'll, I'll catch him somewhere down the road. Uh, it's funny you brought up Macklemore because there's definitely a, a few things on Twitter that, that I want to talk about. You tweeted out, fuck this bitch ass fool and his definition of hip hop, Macklemore represents something bigger. Yeah, some dumbass dude, some stupid rapper dude was on, on, I saw an interview, I don't know how I came across it, but he was talking about like Macklemore and pushing and, a gay agenda. Or yeah, something. yeah, and yeah, pushing the gay agenda and and being white and telling white people to stay in their lane. And you know, I'm a, I'm just about humans being equal. Everybody's equal. Like we, that shouldn't even be brought up. Like it, that that's so that's racist. Like that's so foul. That's equivalent to a black. I mean, to a white guy going, "Why are you in this fucking bathroom? You're fucking black. Don't don't ever step your back like that." And and t when you hear somebody talking like that, it gives you chills. Like, whoa, is this motherfucker serious right now? Like, it's 2013. Is somebody really talking like this right now? So it just kind of, I was like, "What the fuck?" And and it's not like whoever like that dude was, whatever the fuck he was talking like. Anybody can do whatever the fuck they want to do. If Macklemore wants to push for gay rights, why can't he? There's no rules to hip hop going, you can't do this or that. Yeah, yeah, it was founded by certain people who had certain beliefs and things and they had certain personalities, but come on now, this is earth. This is earth, we're all a bunch of ants roaming around. We can do whatever we want. There's no limits to anything. And like, Macklemore, you do whatever he wants. And I'm a, I'm a fan of Macklemore as well and he's the homie, so if somebody is talking shit, I'm gonna back him up on it. Like, and that, that's just stupid to even say that. But even aside from that, just being like, hip hop is a black thing. Like, yeah, it may have been started by black people, and the and, but it's it's evolved so much. And how are you gonna say that when Eminem? Like, okay, so you're just gonna gonna completely ignore Eminem and everything that he's done for hip hop. Like, oh, he just, so he just doesn't exist. And 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 Eminem is like 50% of the fucking rap game, if if you ask me. So you're just gonna completely ignore that. Like, that's so stupid to say, like, 
come on now, it's 2013. Racism shouldn't even be an issue anymore. Like, hip hop has evolved, life has evolved, and there are still racist people out there, but that's just so stupid to say. They're dope MCs, black, white, Chinese, everything. There's so many dope t MCs of different races, and it's just dumb to say that. That just that shows a lack of intelligence to say that. Pop, if you're not spreading love, then why do you even write music? Cause this is how I feel when I ain't rapping on the mic, you bitch. Am I supposed to code it up? Am I not allowed to open up? I spill the blood of rappers and use Wheezy Dress to soak it up. You brought up Eminem. Mm -hmm. you, you actually sent out a couple tweets uh, <laughs> about Eminem. One was, uh, Eminem's my favorite rapper of all time. Now it's time to be his. Yeah. It's just, it's just being funny. It's just being funny. Like, it's, I just said that just to... I like getting seeing people go crazy on Twitter, like, what did you just say or whatever? Because I love Eminem. I, and he's like changed my life. And like, I don't know him personally, but his music has changed my life in ways that he'll probably never even know, where it's just, it inspired me to become something more than what I was. So there's, th there's no way I could ever like fool, like disrespect him and him or be like, fuck him, he's bullshit. Even if he made the wackest song or collab with Soldier Boy, I would still be like, man, fuck, I don't know why I did that, but it's fucking Eminem, I still gotta give him props on it. Cause, you know, so it, it's, um, so yeah, I, I just say, I just do it because, like, I, I, have two, I have two ways of looking at things. I can be your typical Matrix human, like, let's not overstep our boundaries in this hip hop and let's not do what we can't do because you, you don't want to disrespect the wrong person or say the wrong thing because he might get blackballed. And then I just have my outside of being human look on everything where it's just like, I can say whatever I want. I can say whatever I want, you know. I, me personally, I would never diss him to that, on that level and he wouldn't even care if I did, but I, would, I don't have it in me to do, like try to go hard on them and just be an enemy. I don't want to do that, but if I have an opinion, I can I can voice an opinion. I can say whatever I want. I don't know the guy. He's not my brother. He's not my manager. He doesn't work on the same label with me. Why can't I say whatever I want? If I I can, there's no rules to anything. There's no rules saying if you say that you're gonna go to jail. If you do this, like if I feel something, I can say it. As an Eminem fan, I'm curious. Yeah, how do you feel about the the last Eminem tracks that have, that have been leaking? Um, they they've been cool. I'm still more of a fan of the older stuff just because it it's not necessarily the word player. He he still knows how to rap extremely well. I just think it's the it's it doesn't sound as natural as it as it used to. It's the, just the flow of things. It, it uh, and like he I mean he even admits it. They say he sounds like a, a robot or call him rap bot or whatever. It, his flow does sound like that. And you know I can get used to it, but I just I'm a fan of the old the old flow better. But it, it's still dope stuff. Um, I I like Rap God better than Berserk. Um, Berserk, yeah. yeah, yeah. I think that's the consensus out there. Mm -hmm, yeah, but it's. But they're still cool. Um, I'm gonna be a diehard fan of Eminem for life, and so I'm gonna even if he puts out something whack, I'm still gonna like it just because it just because it's Eminem, <laughs> and there's no way to stop that. <laughs> like it, every, everything is put out. Sometimes I hear it, I'm like, uh, I don't know, man. And then and then like a week later, I'm like, fuck yeah, fuck yeah. Eminem. And all of a sudden, I just like it because I'm just a huge fan where I just have to learn every lyric of everything. That's crazy. Yeah. Uh, do you have a favorite Eminem song? Yeah, Role Model. Yeah. Role Model. The way I am and cleaning out my closet, those are my top three favorite songs. Definitely uh, older Eminem. Mm -hmm.